How the heck are you, friends? Let's get into it. This weekend in Watcher of Realms, we have two very exciting 10x banners coming to the game. They're actually going live in about 10 hours from now. Uh, and you may be debating, you may still be wondering which of the two should you pull on, or should you pull on both? Well, in my opinion, for the vast majority of us, there's absolutely a clear choice, and that's what I want to quickly advocate for, and maybe help some of you guys out. So quickly, I do not think you should pull on Captain Reeve, except for a rare circumstance if you're the kind of person that has been spending or somehow diligently saving and you do have 250 summons then he's super worth pulling on he's an amazing amazing champion i'm not going to break him down more than just stating a couple skills really quickly but uh a lot of people have he's awesome but i don't think it's advantageous to the vast majority of our accounts like i said so damage to one enemy cool whatever an amazing ultimate here with big aoe a big big stun for 20 seconds uh, he can also inflict slow uh, when people are within range. When they're under a crowd control effect, like the stun or the slow, you get 3% max HP restoration. And then if you also get Razak, who's on the other banner, uh, you got a big boost in gold. Well, not big, but 6%. It's nothing to sneeze at. Crazy talent for any four enemies killed. Increases his attack. He's just crazy. He's a, he's a defender, but he puts out really significant magic damage. He's got CC, crowd control effects. I'm not saying he's bad at all. I think he's awesome. But it's a 10x basically just for him. To my knowledge, Osiren, first off, Osiren's not that great. And I think he's just an, an, a reward from the event that's coming out alongside him. Uh, but if you can't guarantee him with the 250 summons, I think it's the second banner that's way more exciting for, like I said, the vast majority of us. And it's not even because of these two amazing legendaries, which I'll go over very quickly. It's because of these two epics here at the end. So... Let's just show arrogance. I'm not going to get into that because people are fawning over him, rightfully so. He is an absolute beast. He's going to instantly be one of the best characters in the game. Uh, he is a fighter, putting out some melee dam damage. But as you can see here, he also, for close enemies, he's putting on like fighter-like melee damage. But then for airborne, airborne or further away enemies, he's going to use his bow and do kind of range damage. So basically, he's a hybrid between a fighter and a marksman. But on top of that, he puts out burning, some big AoE. Uh, he's got his two different stances. Just crazy damage he's going to put out. When he kills people, he's stacking attack speed. In his normal stance, he can also have chances to stack attack speed. Um, like I said, I'm not going to break it down so thoroughly. Trust me, trust everyone else you're hearing from. He is goaded. Amazing champion. And then Razak, Basically, we all want Maul. He's one of the better epic champions in the game. Razak, at least with his ultimate, is just a juiced up Maul. I mean, he has 700% damage when you skill it up at an 800 cost, which is not that much for putting out 1,000% damage. Uh, and on a legendary champion in here, not on an epic. So if we go to hero de details max level, over 4,000 base attack, he is the real deal. If you pull either of these guys, it will be very cool for your account. Soleil, She's not good. Uh, she is very much a sad, sad, sad consolation prize or penalty, but it's these last two epics uh, that I really just want to highlight. And I'm not going to go on about them forever. I'm just going to tell you, if you check any tier list, you talk to anyone that has them, for what they do, they're two of the best in the game, regardless of rarity. Um, and they, from every everyone I've talked to, they are harder to pull. You know, they say, they don't make it clear with the non-lord epics and stuff are the rates all actually the same do you have the same likelihood to pull in the salt as you do alaga in my opinion i don't think it's true it seems very hard to get this guy and here's an amazing chance to get him on a 10x um so he's a defender normal style attack uh one uh tile of range uh and he puts out shield right he's got very nice base stats i'll pull it up for you now healthy hp healthy very healthy defense um, he's got a block of three. However, let's go into uh, his skills. So cool. So here, the most basic, basic attack of all time. Super mid, just some random piercing damage, one enemy, whatever. But then this unbreakable ultimate in combination when this auto basically kind of passive, just this move that will automatically happen. Uh, just, he's just fantastic. If you build him right, uh, he's going to take like no damage in a lot of content. So when his ultimate is up, which is a skill cost of 900, so a bit steep, but it's going to last for 30 seconds when you skill him up. And when it's skilled up, you'll have a reduction of 50% piercing damage. Um, he will increase his block by one and be in a defensive stance. So he's not going to put out damage, but you're not building him for damage. He's basically just going to stand there as a shield for the rest of your team. It's fantastic. You couple that with when he's not doing his ultimate, he's got this auto silver shield that when leveled up is going to give an 85% shield based off of his max HP, triggering every 12 seconds down to a 10 second uh, rotation once you get him skilled up. 
he's he's nutty. Like it's not the most interesting kid of all time. He doesn't have a talent or anything, but he is just a wall, right? Uh, and he's a wall you're gonna want on your team. Uh, it's as simple as that. Let's look at his reviews. He's nuts. Everyone loves him. You're just seeing high fours all across the board for relevant content. Um, doesn't matter how many defenders you have. If you don't have this guy, he's gonna be someone you want on your team. I've seen builds with him, for example, uh, in Artifact Material Raid, where you don't need to run a healer, because if you don't, if you just manual it and you don't use his ultimate, you can just keep this shield cycling, cycling, cycling. They can never do enough damage before you put another shield up. He's so, so, so good. Uh, and then Midon, um, just an amazing healer. Uh, there's basically two kinds of healers in this game. Um, you have uh, attack-based healers and HP-based healers. I think the vast majority of us probably prefer HP-based healers, at least uh, in a lot of situations. They're just easier to build because by stacking them with HP, which their heal is based on, so as you can see here, restores HP based on the targets and the caster's max HP. Um, you're putting tankiness on them because that's their HP, but it's also going to scale their heal up. And Madan just does really big AoE HP based heals. And there's not that much more we have to say about it. Very reasonable cost at only 15. If we look at her ultimate, she does like a cleanse, dispels all debuffs. Debuffs are not really a thing right now in the game, but if they ever arrive, that's great. But it's really just you build it up uh, for a skill cost of 1000. Once you skill her, you get 110% uh, of the healing multiplier, which again is based off of her HP. That's a huge, huge amazing uh, AoE heal. Uh, and then uh, couple that with the passive. Um, she's gonna heal whatever heal target she hits. Uh, they're gonna get a defense increase for four seconds, and that is gonna be plus 10% up to plus 20%. Um, so that's just just great. And it's up to seven seconds when you skill her up. Neither of these champions, Midon or Olog, have these like, wow, how do I wrap my head around this kit? Like someone like Arrogance, there's so much going on. It's not that there's so much going on, it's just the little things that are going on in these kits are really, really good things. And those are things you are gonna want in your champions, you are gonna want in your roster. And I think I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, a lot of us are not gonna pull legendaries. It is not a 2X, it is a 10X. So you're gonna get epics if you pull enough, and hopefully they're these two. Hopefully you don't get a bunch of Soleils, and maybe if you're really lucky, you get Arrogance or Razak. Again, I'm not gonna fault you, of course, if you go for Captain Reeve, and if you have the 250 summons, I say go for it. He is a limited champion, but like I said, the vast majority of us, that's the key word here, the key, key phrase, we're gonna want Olaga, we are gonna want Midon. Let me know in the comments who you guys are gonna pull for. I'll see you in the next one. Fast Didius.